thank you to the United Way for inviting me to come to speak to you. Uh, I was told uh, to talk to you a bit about homelessness in our community for uh, a couple of minutes, but I also wanted to take this chance to say thank you to Labour. Uh, as an academic, uh, I, I study social justice issues, and uh, as someone who works closely with the community, I work a lot with health and social uh, service agencies. And we know when it comes to social justice issues that labor is there beside us, in front of us, behind us, are there supporting us in our community. Uh, and so I wanted to, to say thank you to labor today. If you uh, read the comments on the Free Press Online, well, if you read the comments on the Free Press Online, you're not getting probably the best cross-section of the feelings of our city. But if you do uh, choose to spend your time that way, and it's an article about homelessness, it's an article about poverty, it's an article about the Occupy movement, invariably, top three comments, someone will say, they just need to get a job. And, uh, and I'm sure we've seen that, and I'm sure we've heard that emotion uh, from our community, from our friends. Maybe we've expressed it ourselves. One of the things that I learned in my five years working as a nurse at the Indian Community Health Centre in their Health Outreach Project for Homeless People was that homeless people are some of the busiest people that I've ever met. If you put yourself into the, the situation of someone who's living on the streets, and you think about what their day might look like. They might have to go downtown to see their Ontario Works worker. And then they might have to head out to the East End, uh, to CAS, uh, to work with the caseworker out there. Then they have to get down to Adelaide and Commissioners to go to the food bank. They have to get up to St. Joe's for an x-ray. And all of this is walking. And so people experiencing homelessness, I would never describe as lazy. Because the struggle to survive, the things that we take for granted in food and shelter, is an, is an effort, is a work, is a, a consistent busyness that they require. So when people ask me often, uh, what, why is there homelessness in our community? Why is there homelessness in a rich country like Canada? Well, I can tell you it's not laziness. And the other thing I often hear is that it's all about addiction. I can tell you that it isn't just because the statistics, 30 to 40 percent of people experiencing homelessness are experiencing an addiction. So it's, it's less than the majority. And, and in that, the more important statistic, I think, is when we look to other countries similar to our own. When we look to places like, uh, like Sweden, who have a very similar GDP, fairly similar um, uh, type of, of country as ours, they have about 10% or less of the homelessness we have, but the exact same rates of addiction in their communities. So addiction doesn't cause homelessness, because if it did, every nation would, that have the same levels of addiction would have the same levels of homelessness. So it's not about being lazy, and it's not about being drunk. So what is homelessness? Homelessness is a choice. And before you throw tomatoes at me, let me explain that. Homelessness is a choice not of the individual. Homelessness is a choice of the society. Because if we said that as Canadians, as a community, as people who care about everyone in our society, that we want to end homelessness, we could do it like that. We could build housing, we could provide supports, and we can make it happen. So homelessness is a choice of our communities. So what are some of the things that we would need to do? What would ending homelessness look like? Well, first off, people would have to be able to afford to live. To be able to afford to live, one of the things would be to have jobs. So first we could start by not sending jobs down to Indiana. So people, could, people need jobs. <laughs> But we know that not everyone can work right now, and some people will never be able to work. And so for those individuals, they need an income. And so we need to provide them with an income that is livable, that will put them into a home.
Currently, our social assistance rates for a, a single individual are $592 a month. Our average market rent for a bachelor apartment in London is $585 a month. So that gives you a couple of choices. One, you can spend all of your money on shelter and have no, nothing for food, clothing, and incidentals. Or you can get on the waiting list for affordable housing. The waiting list for affordable housing in London, as of about two weeks ago when I just calculated it again, is 8.2 years. So that's not much of an option. So your other options remaining are shelter, or uh, doubling up with other families, crashing at places that aren't your own, or staying with a slumlord with seven other people in a basement for $300 a month. So we need to provide jobs, we need to provide people who can't work with an income. And the other thing that we need to do, of course, is to build housing. The 8.2 year waiting list is, is not acceptable uh, in my mind. Uh, we need to provide housing for people. Um, however, it's not enough to just provide housing. Because those of you who uh, are familiar with health and social services know that for a lot of people, the, the housing is a great place to start, but they also need support. Because we get this cycle. So we help people move into housing, they have crises around, uh, around family, around mental health, around addictions, and then they're back out into shelter again. So we need to provide supports. So that picture of, of making sure our jobs stay uh, in our communities, of providing social assistance rates that are humane, of providing places for people to live, that doesn't come for free. That doesn't come for free. That, and if we're going to provide that, that means that comes from people like us who pay our taxes. And that's something that we have to have as a difficult and serious conversation as Canadians, is what are our values? I, I imagine if I went and asked each of you, do you think we should end homelessness? Every one of you would say yes, absolutely. It makes no sense to have homelessness in our society. And so the next question is, what are we willing to do about it? And how much are we willing to pay? Is this our value? If this is a value, like health care, which we pay for, and which I'm a happy taxpayer to pay for the health that my grandfather with dementia, to pay for the care that he gets, are we willing to pay to eliminate homelessness in our community? And the other thing that has to happen, of course, is the political will. Because it's all well and good to, to say what, uh, what we want in terms of our services. But the political will will follow the public will. And if we're demanding lower taxes and we're demanding uh, other things, that's what they will listen to. They'll respond to that. But we as a community demand that homelessness is ended. It will and it can happen. It is not impossible. And so that's my message to you tonight, is that homelessness, if you break it down as a complexity of different systems and issues and individuals, but it is a problem that we can solve. And it is a problem that if it is our compassion as Canadians to end, that we can do that. And I know that labor is compassionate, and I know that you seek for social justice in our community. And so I hope that uh, we have 200 people in this room who are ready to, to demand the end of homelessness, and we just have 30 million more Canadians to go, and we can do it. Thank you.